welcome viewers if still you're not subscribed to this channel kindly subscribe and also click the bell icon to get technology updates regularly on this jp infotech channel hi in this video we are going to see about a java project which is entitled as dual server public key authenticated encryption with keyword search which is an IEEE 2022 transaction paper before seeing the execution of the project, let me brief about this project. We all know that the data stored in the cloud storage is being encrypted to make the data more secure. But the problem comes here when we searching the data in the cloud server because it has been encrypted to get that exact data is been a problem. To overcome this already in the traditional method, they have used PEKS that is public key encryption with keyword search. So this is the system that has been used in the existing to make the search the data from the cloud server. But the problem with the uh, traditional PKS scheme is like it is vulnerable to the inside keyword guessing attack which is shortly known as IKGA. So the existing PKS me method has the problem of this uh, IKGA that is inside keyword guessing attack. So to overcome all these issues, the author in the paper has been proposed this dual server public key authenticated encryption with keyword search which is shortly known as DPAEKS which is protects against this existing inside keyword guessing attack. So now let us see the what is the architecture. So kindly note that the existing system there are data owner data receiver and the cloud server so there are three entities so in the existing system the data owner will be uploading the file in the cloud server and the data receiver will be searching for the cloud in the cloud server and they'll be getting but the problem is there is a, a attack called inside keyword guessing attack so to overcome this issue in this paper the authors have proposed then two entity additionally that is the data owner the data receiver is the two entity and another two entity is like instead of the cloud server we have two servers called AS and TS that is assistant server and test server so instead of the one server we are going to use the dual server so here the data owner will be uploading the files which will be stored in the both AS and TS but the thing is like whenever the data receiver wants the file the both the AS and TS should be combined to work and then only with the with, 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 while making the ICT it can be able to give the file to the data receiver so one whenever the two server even the AS or TS when both are combined and authenticated only they can able to get the file in case even one is not authenticated the file will not be retrieved from the cloud server so it will be completely secured when compared to the traditional single server concept so here we can see one thing that is ICT that is intermediate cipher text that is called IC, I, ICT so here the two servers to combine to receive this intermediate cipher 6 so AS can compute the ICT and give it TS and when both are combined only the data can be retrieved here. so now let us see the execution of the project before that kindly note that we cannot implement the exact algorithm or mathematical models as shown in the base paper though only the main objectives of the paper will be implemented so here we have used the Java and we have used NetBeans IDE 8.2. So first open the NetBeans IDE 8.2. Now let us import the project into the NetBeans IDE. So just go to the file menu and click open project. Now go to the source code location. So in the source code folder, you can find this dual server authentication encryption and select it and click open project. Now kindly wait that till the complete project has been loaded into the NetBeans IDE. And here you can see the loading status it takes some time so in meanwhile we will just attach the database in the mysql so just go to the mysql administrator and just enter the root username and password as root and root and click ok and now go to the restore option now select the open backup file now go to the source code location again to attach the database in the database folder you can find the database and then click the start restore 
Now you can see the message the restore operation was finished successfully message and click close. Now you can close this MySQL part because we have attached the database successfully. So coming back to the NetBeans IDE you can see the project is being loaded completely. In case if you are finding this uh, error in the web page part that is due to the template mismatch so that is not an, a code in the error you can just ignore it or if you wanted to clear it just open that and if you select this filter out option it will be cleared so you can see the error is now cleared this style.css part So now you can see it has been cleared. So now let us execute the project. So just right click it and then click run and kindly wait till the project is being loaded into the browser part. It takes some time for it. And now you can see the home screen or the welcome screen of the project with the project title, do your server public key authenticated encryption with keyword search. And uh, here you can see the entities data owner, data receiver, test server and assistant server. Now let us see the things one by one. So first let me go to the data owner. So now let me, as I am a new data owner, I will be going to the registration. Just click this new registration. It will be navigated to the data owner registration form where the data owner should register by giving the details as so just let me give the details. And after entering, let me click the register button and here you can see the registration is success now and click ok now it will be navigated to the data owner login page so just enter the email id and the password which we have used during the registration time and here you can see even though i have given the exact username and password you can see the message that your account not yet approved please try again later so even the data owner is registered correctly they need to be approved by the server part so first let me go to the test server and show you how it is so just click this test server you can see the test server login page so just enter the username and password as ts and click submit and now you can see the login is success and click ok and you can see the test server home page once the login is successful and here you can see the details of data owner details data receiver details files details file request intermediate ICT that is intermediate cipher text details so everything is empty now so now let me log out and now let me go to the assistant server so let's just enter the uh, username and password as AAS for this assistant server login page and click submit and now you can see the login is successful and click ok and now you can see here in the assistant server only the data owner activation part is there so just you can see the DO activation so just click this data owner activation where you can see the data owner id 1 the name which i have entered email id the phone number address whichever and status you can see it is no because it has not been activated and you can see the date and time of it so only if the server approves it the data owner can log into the system so this is to make the system more secure and to avoid unwanted users or intruders into the system so now let me approve it so just click this approve and now you can see the access is granted and click ok and now you can see the data owner activation table is empty because there is no any pending activations so now uh, let me log out from this part and now let me go to the data owner part and now let me enter the username and password which i have given earlier and then click submit and this time you can see the login is success now and click ok and now it will be navigated to the data owner home page and in the data owner you can find the options of file upload my files keyword index and file transaction so let us see the things one by one so you can see everything is empty now because we are not done anything so first let me go to the file upload part so before file uploading as this is a cloud project we need to upload the file both in the, the local and also in the cloud server so 
for uploading the data in the cloud we are using drive hq so just open the drive hq.com so you need to register here by clicking sign up and activate the account and once after the registration you need to want activating your account you need to enter your username and password in the coding part so in the source code folder in the src file you can find this ftpcon.java in the line number 30 you need to enter the username and password of your account which are created so that the data which you are uploading it will be stored in the cloud part also so now coming back so let me upload a file called uh, let me enter as keyword as cloud let me choose a file before that let me create a file so let me create a file called cloud test and let me enter this details and now let me select the file from the desktop cloud test and then click upload so now you can see the file is uploaded to the server and click ok now if you go to the my files part you can see the file id and what is the file name and what is the file type and uploaded date and time has been updated now let me go to the drive hq part and log in with my credentials so where you can see the the file that we have uploaded that is being stored as encrypted cloud test you can see the date and time 23 2033 1 1 o'clock so same date and time you can see here so it has been uploaded now and once if you click the file you can see the data cannot be read because the files have been encrypted so now it is made sure that we have uploaded the file in the cloud server part so now let me go to the next part so let me log out from this data owner part as we have done it so now let me go to the data receiver so for the data receiver let me create a new registration as we don't have any new data re receiver part so now let me create a new registration so let me name the new registration as bob and now let me click the register button and now you can see the registration is success as we did for the data owner the same even if you are giving the username and password after the registration it cannot log in because it should be approved by the assistant server so let's just click the assistant server and click asas as username and password now after the login is successful you can see dr activation with is data receiver activation part so here you can see the data that we have entered has been updated here and status is no now so now once if the assistant server approves only the data receiver will also can log in into the system so now let me approve the system so now you can see the access is granted and click ok and now if we log out and go to the data receiver part so just enter the email id and the password which we have given for the user registration time and click submit and you can see the login is success now and click ok and now it will be navigated to the data receiver home page where the data receiver has the option of search files request status and file transaction everything is empty now let me search for a file for example if i am giving a keyword so you can see the keyword is not found because we have not entered any such keyword in the cloud server so now let me enter a keyword which we have given cloud and then click for search and now you can see the searched file is being shown with the id keyword and the file name as the keyword should not be stored exactly it has been encrypted and that part has been shown here and now if the data user wants the file now let us see the how it happens so now let me click the request and now you can see the request has been sent and click ok now if you go to the request status you can see the file which is requested and what is the secret key as you can see the secret key is not generated and so status has been waiting so if you click the view result part you can see the request has been not approved because only if we are having the secret key generated by both the servers the data user can able to see the file so you can see uh, now let me go to the assistant server part 
now if you go to the files part you can see what is the files uploaded by the data owners you can see what is the file and you can see the file request so you can see the requested file it has been empty now so first let me go to the test server part so in the test server part you can see the details of the data owner earlier whatever we have done and second we have done second data receiver the details and next you go to the files part you can see what are the files available so here if you go to the file request here you can see the requested file so here whenever the data user request for the file it will be updated to the test server now so here you can see the id the tab door the dri data receiver id the name id of the data owner and what is the data owner name and what is the status and time of it so just let me click this verify here you can see now the important part that is the ICT intermediate cipher text has been sent. So now if you go to the intermediate cipher text, it is not being generated because both the server should generate that. So just if you go to the AAS assistant server, so if you go to the file request part, so here you can see the intermediate cipher text ICT process here. Earlier it was empty and now you can see the details that is ID the tab door the status has been verified and secret key is been not generated. So only if the both the server is being verifying that one it can be able to the data user can able to view the file. So now let me click the process and now you can see the results sent to the receiver. Now let us see what happens. So let me log out and go to the data receiver part. So now Bob enters the details. And just go to the request status and now you can see earlier the status was waiting and now you can see as both the server approved it the status has been changed to uh, granted and only if they are having the secret key they can able to view the file so just if you click view results it asks for the secret key if i am giving some dummy secret key you can see it shows that invalid secret key and only if you are giving the exact secret key now you can see it asks for the uh, download thing I'm just going to the downloads and saving it and just to open it you can see the exact file which is uploaded by the data owner has been given to the data user only after the approval of both the servers and if you go to the file transaction you can see what all the file that is transacted by the user has been updated here and once if you go to the test server part you can see the details of the files and so everything is empty now because there is no any new request and you can see everything is empty there is no any new request so just go to the data owner part now so in the data owner part you can find the file transaction so here the data owner can see which data receiver has viewed the file and what is the date and time and which file they have viewed so all the details have been updated to the data owner also in this way you are going to secure from the ICT that is the uh, inside guessing attack from the cloud server by splitting up into the dual server for the cloud and whenever the both the clouds are authenticated only the data user can able to view the exact file of it and this is all about the project dual server public key authenticated encryption with keyword search and thank you for watching